Hi, my name is Hugo Forster. I'm the owner of Trenchless Pipe Lining in Florida. In the next few minutes, I'm going to explain to you what two technologies exist as of 2020 to reline the cast iron pipes under your home or the buildings that you live in so you don't have to dig up the floors to replace them. There are currently two types of technology. The first kind is called spin cast pipe lining and it looks like this and you can see it's extremely smooth on the inside and the second technology is called cured in place pipelining and it looks like this and both of these technologies solve the same problem after about 50 years the cast iron pipes underneath a home or a building corrode at the bottom of the pipe where the water runs that's where the fastest corrosion occurs and eventually the pipe gets so thin it cracks and then the crack widens until the cast iron has serrated edges like this the serrated edges on the bottom catch the debris and cause repeated backups and the reason you're probably watching this video is because a plumber told you you have to dig up your home or the building to replace all these pipes well since 1998 this kind of pipelining called cured in place pipelining has existed to restore those pipes it comes with a 50-year warranty this technology which is newer and has several benefits to it um, it's been around since 2017 and um, in both instances it costs a lot less to reline your pipes than to dig it up the old-fashioned way for example a 2,000 square foot house will cost about fifty thousand dollars to dig up these pipes and replace them it takes about two months and you have to move everybody out they dig a three foot wide trench for about hundred feet long throughout the whole property you got to move the furniture out as well with pipelining we can restore those pipes within four days the entire property nobody has to move out you can use the plumbing the whole time except for the middle of the day usually around four hours and it takes about four to five days the warranty that we offer it's a 50-year warranty it's transferable so if you ever sell a house the reline pipes of which we make video recordings when we're done and give it to you uh, that warranty is transferable to the new homeowner uh, a lot of our clients are homeowners that just bought a property experienced backups right away and find, found out that they have to tear up all the floors that they just remodeled to replace the pipes a lot of our other clients are a buyer and a seller have an agreement and they went through inspection and then they discover that the cast iron pipes are old if any homes that have that were built before 1974 are going to have these cast iron pipes and it's a guaranteed thing that the bottom will rust away and they'll eventually have to be replaced or relined so let me jump right in and explain to you how pipe lining works I'm going to start with uh, spin cast first that's the newer one from 2017 the first step to realign the pipe is to remove the old rust and scale from the pipe and for that we need an access point every property has a main line and branch lines that connect to the main line where the main line leaves the property there's usually an old access point called a clean out that's buried under the ground we locate that using fancy technology we dig up the old clean out and from there we do all the cleaning the measurements and the installation for spin cast lining we actually only need one access point and that can be a roof stack every pipe has a vertical pipe that goes through the roof so the underground pipe when water flows down it it can suck air in through the roof vent stack the roof vent stack can be our access point or the clean out can be our access point in the case of the main line so with spin cast lining we only need one access point always on the outside of the property we don't need to come inside the property necessarily so we can do the work while while you're at work with cured in place pipelining the process is a little different you need two access points and I'll get back to that later so with spin cast lining a two-part epoxy resin mixture is mixed together in the right ratio and pumped out of a tube and the tube goes into the pipe to the furthest end of the pipe and under video inspection there is a machine that rotates and spins this epoxy and it casts it onto the wall of the pipe then we let it cure for four hours and then repeat the process again and so a double layer is applied so we can achieve the correct thickness for strength 
Now, once you've applied this, this liner, it's extremely strong. It stops all corrosion. It has a 50-year warranty because the water can no longer reach the old cast iron. So this epoxy is completely inert to acids, alkaline materials, uh, volatile substances, and if somebody were to flush a toy down the drain or something large, you could actually snake this line and, remo and remove that stuff without damaging the lining. Now, let me explain the cured in place pipe lining installation. The pipe lining is a little bit different. It, co it consists of four layers initially. There's an outside fabric over here that is saturated with a two-part epoxy resin. You mix part A and B together and then it starts reacting and heats up to about 180 degrees Fahrenheit within 30 or 40 minutes and then it turns into rock. This plastic layer here separates these two balloons that are on the inside. There's a blue balloon and a black balloon. It separates those from the epoxy resin that's in this fabric because it's very sticky and very tough. So this plastic allows us, when this is cured after four hours in the pipe, it allows us to pull everything out and leave behind your relined pipe. So how does this process work exactly? What we do is we put the video camera from the outside of the property into the pipe that we're going to reline. And let's pretend Let's pretend this is your main line going horizontally and it has branch lines from say toilets, laundry or kitchen. What we do is we put the camera from the outside of the property through the pipe and when it's at this intersection we make a mark on the cable outside of the property where the pipe emerges from the house. Then we push the camera to the next intersection like this and we make another mark and then we pull the whole camera out and, where, where, and we lay it next to the lining we're going to install and when, wherever there was a mark on the cable representing this connection, we cut out a piece of this lining before we install the lining in the pipe. That way we don't cover up this connection. But it also means there's a small area of pipe that is unlined with this cured in place pipe lining. Now that's actually not a big issue as you would think because this fitting, this piece here is called a Y because it looks like a Y sort of. And the cast iron Y is about twice as thick as the pipe that goes into it. So we can always see the video cameras, we can see that there are cracks in the bottom of the pipe till it reaches this. And then the cast iron Y is, is twice as thick, so it doesn't have the cracks in it. So the lining we install actually overlaps into the thick part of the Y. And yes, it skips over a piece of, of the pipe, you know, that stays unlined. But it's usually not an issue because that Y has about a hundred year lifespan. Now having said that, we do run into some issues where the wires are corroded for some reason or the other um, and we have solutions for that as well. So once this lining has uh, been measured and cut to size, we bundle it together into a small bundle. We bundle it together and we put painter's tape around it to hold it as a small, smaller profile than the pipe we're going to reline. And then from the outside of the house where the clean out is, we pull this into the pipe using a cable until this lines up with this connection and we stop and then we inflate the balloons for four hours. The balloon pops the tape off, the tape stays between the cast iron and the, the lining, you'll never know it was there. And after four hours we pull out the balloon. Um, since we had to string a cable through this pipe in order to pull the lining in, we needed a second access point with cured in place pipe lining. We have to get into the house. So someone has to either be there or give us access. We have to literally put a cable in the pipe by taking a toilet off or in some instances we have to make a small hole in the kitchen wall on the outside of the house in order to reach the kitchen line for example and the same goes for the laundry line. So with cured in place pipe lining your two disadvantages are big ones. You're not lining the connections. That's more like an aesthetic thing when you're done and you make the video and you're worried about some cast iron. Um, and the other thing is you may have to do a little bit of excavation on the wall, either in the laundry or the kitchen. There's one more limitation with cured in place pipe lining. This is quite a stiff material. If there are several bends in the pipe, every bend that this gets pulled around creates additional friction. So after two or three bends, you can't pull the lining in. And if it, if it gets stuck and you can't pull it out, this will harden in this fashion and 
and it, it'll obstruct the pipe and you'll never get it out. You'll have to ex excavate through the floor or under the house to get it out. So this is a little more dangerous when it comes to pulling it through bends. With spin cast pipelining, you can pull it, you can go through five bends if you like, and there's no disadvantage. Let me uh, address the advantages and disadvantages of each type of pipelining. Um, I'll begin with the, the cured in place pipelining since we discussed that last. Again, we need two access points. The lining can get stuck. If the lining is pulled in and just off by a fraction of an inch, this connection can be covered up, but the lining can extend into the connection just a fraction and it can cause backups just because we have that lining inside the connection. Um, now we do have the technology to come in through the connection and polish that open with fancy tools. Um, the technology that evolved with this stuff to clean the pipes and to remove excess lining has become very advanced. There's a whole series of patented tools that you have to buy when you get into this line of work. The upside of cured in place pipelining is that it's a little thicker than spin cast pipelining. So when you make the final video, it's a little smoother and aesthetically more appealing from that aspect. But you will see cast iron somewhere in the pipe. Normally, it's only 2% of the pipe that's unlined, these connections, but it can be an issue if you want to sell the house and someone says, well, what about those connections? And now you have to explain about that. With spin cast pipelining, we line through the whole pipe. Even this gets lined. And when we come in through the branch line, the whole branch line gets lined, so 100% of the pipe gets lined. The spin cast is a little thinner, but it's not an issue in terms of strength because you're lining the pipe under the house. You don't have tree roots growing in. If you were to line a pipe outside of the house where tree roots can grow into the pipe, spin cast works, but in some instances, if the tree roots are too thick, like under oak trees, as opposed to palm trees. Oak tree roots are very thick and stubborn and they can crush uh, even pipes, line pipes. You have to use the strongest possible lining if you're lining pipes outside of the house, which is the case with uh, cured in place pipe lining. Now, let me show you a sample close up of the thickness level of cured in place pipe lining versus spin cast pipe lining. On your right side is a spin cast and you can see the surface is very smooth and slippery, right? Yes, on the other side, we have cured in place pipelining. The, the surface is also very smooth, but if you compare the thicknesses, the cured in place pipelining is just a fraction thicker than the spin cast, but it's totally irrelevant for, for pipes that are underneath the property. Finally, let's look at some actual lined pipes so you know what to expect. This is cured in place pipelining. The surface is relatively smooth because it's a little bit thicker than epoxy. This is where your first branch connections are. On the left and right are two bathroom branch lines. And then it transitions to another area where there's another connection on the right hand side over here. You can't see it because it's a two inch connection from a kitchen. That's your first 90 degree bend. Let's have a look at some spin cast pipe lining. This is an old pipe that was so rough it could barely be saved, but we were able to reline it using spin cast. And that is your first 90 degree bend coming up. And it's quite smooth. As you can see, it's very slippery. The, on the left side over here, you have a branch connection. And on the right side, you have a branch connection. And the entire pipe is lined and the branch connections are wide open. This is a vertical roof drain that was lined. It had a vertical crack in it in a high rise building, leaking into the walls every time it rained. The, Cured in place pipelining wouldn't go around the multiple bends. There's your first bend. On the left is a connection from another part of the roof. It's another rain drain. And here comes your second bend in the pipe. There are actually three bends in total. So there's nowhere to save this with cured in place pipelining. And that there is your final bend.